everybody. Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us for what is now the last of our Know Before You Go series. Uh, thanks for hanging in there all summer. I believe, if I'm counting correctly, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. I think this is number 12. So uh, hopefully you've had a chance to sit in on many of them. Um, and uh, for those of you that haven't, they are available available in the virtual orientation link online, so you can look back and review several of them if that is something that you find, would find helpful. Um, for those of you that don't know me yet, I'm Julie Dunn. I'm the Senior uh, Associate Dean of Students. Uh, use she, her, or they, them pronouns, and I have the distinct privilege of having opening week and the welcome of our new students and their families to campus as one of the, the primary parts of the portfolio that I carry. I'm going to try to try to send something through the chat. Hopefully everybody can see it. Maybe not. If not, I'll put it in the Q&A. Um, but we do have the orientation schedule up and running. Hopefully you've had a chance to take a peek at it. Um, I will actually screen share here. Uh, so that you can see it. Oh, let's see, let me get to the right bit here. Don't be overwhelmed by the pink. That just happens to be the color. Uh, maybe it's a Barbie summer or something, but that happens to be the color of the opening week calendar on my schedule. I know it looks really busy and perhaps a little overwhelming, but you don't go to all of these things. Uh, there are things that you do it in your halls that uh, we end up doing twice over because of the, the size of the class. So um, I'm just going to start at the top of the QAs and work my way down. Um, and you just keep putting them in there and I will keep answering them. Um, I think everybody knows I've been at the campus for quite a bit of time. I'm starting my 31st year. I spent 16 as a faculty member and I have held more titles than I have fingers. So I feel like I'm in a good position to uh, wrap up this uh, uh, no before we go series um, and make sure we've got all of our questions answered. So the top question is, uh, my student uh, put in a request for a rental fridge. Um, how do we know if she got one? Uh, we have sent out the first round of confirmations. Here's what I will tell you. If you could submit the form, you have a rental fridge. As soon as we rent out the fridges, the form closes. And just in case you're worried, uh, we're about four fridges away from that form closing. So as long as the form went through and she was able to submit it without getting an error message, she has a fridge uh, assigned for her. Let's see. Um, is there a schedule of events for parents after the Thursday parent event? There are no other events for parents. So parents on my calendar are orange. Hopefully you can see that. Um, and so uh, the, the scheduling for parents ends uh, at the fair family farewell event on uh, Thursday, August 24th. Sounds like you're staying in town. Enjoy our town. We've got awesome, great things going on, um, but there are no uh, formal programs that, that go after uh, the 24th, that last little bit. Is there a schedule? Oh, let's see. I think that we already did this one. Um, Okay, I answered that one. Let me see. Can you clarify the process for students who have not yet registered for their full number of credits? Yeah, great question. Um, so uh, our registration happens in three rounds is probably the best way to describe it. The first round ends on Friday. So if you have not added courses to your schedule, students, this would be the time to do it. You have till tomorrow to get this done. Um, and so we definitely want you uh, to, to get in. If you're having trouble figuring out how to get in, uh, you need to call the registrar's office so that somebody can walk you through that process. So um, all students at this point have four credits for first year seminar. They are allowed to add up to 10 additional credits to get to a total of 14 at the end of round one. So uh, four for first year seminar, and then typically two additional classes that are likely four, four credits each. And then maybe if they wanted to add a music lesson or something like that, you might be, you're going to be someplace between 12 and 14 by Friday. Um, that's where we want you to be. Round two, students don't actually have any part of. Round two is the assigning of first year uh, of rhetoric, writing, and 
public discourse 170 sections for those students who will be remaining in that course. Remember the writing assessment tests you out of that course, uh, but it's an expectation that everybody has met the requirements of that course. So um, they will then round two is putting people in the sections of those courses, working around their existing schedule. And then finally, round three happens on August 24th. It's this big chunk right here in the middle of the morning of August 24th, the individual advising appointments. That's when students who maybe only have 12 credits right now and do not have a section of rhetoric writing public discourse 170 on their schedule will have an opportunity to add a course. So um, by, the, by the end of the 24th, we will want you to have a full full schedule and to be on uh, to be on track uh, and graduate on time at Whitman, you need to have uh, someplace between 15 and 16 credits per semester. And I'm always going to recommend the 16 side of the between 15 and 16 credits. So hopefully that that clears that up. Um, in terms of the rhetoric writing and public discourse, I see there's a couple about this. Um, there are there is a makeup period for students that uh, did not have internet access during the window in which um, the test was originally administered. Uh, it runs from August 21st through the 25th. It has a, a couple of different pieces um, to that that address it in the makeup window. Um, you have once you once you click it, you're in, and you need to be working on it then. So don't click on it to look at it click on it to take it um, and that you have a two hour window uh, in which to take it during th those five days. I would really, really, really encourage you if you can do it before you come to campus. Um, I, I am fully aware that you are going to be very busy on the 23rd, 24th and 25th. Um, and so if you can get it done Monday uh, before you travel this direction, um, or in the midst of your travel this direction, I think it will be a better experience for you as opposed to trying to, to do it on move-in day or you know on a day when, as you can see, we've got a lot, lot of stuff planned for you. Um, and so uh, as students, I, I know they're working on the first round of assessment grading and they're starting to populate sections in and around students' schedules that look like they're, they're finalized. So you'll start to see those show up here um, in the next days. Uh, and you'll certainly know whether you're in a section of rhetoric writing public discourse 170 before uh, August 24th. So the way to look at your schedule is to go into my.whitman.edu, click on your schedule. If you see something that says RWPD 170, you're in it. And if you don't, you're probably not. So I know they're in the process of getting those done. Okay, let's see. I think I answered all of that. Um, next question is, do students have to check in before their dorm move in time? They don't. As you can see from the schedule, uh, we will be checking students in from eight in the morning until two. Um, the things that you get at check in are things like your ID, which you might find to be extremely helpful when you then move in. So to the extent if you're in town uh, and your move in time is at 10 coming in through uh, through the check-in, you know, in that eight to 10 block would be wise. If you're in that later group, the 11 group, you know, sometime before 11, great. Um, we also know that there are people that are coming in later in the day. Uh, and so we really do want you to come through check-in. It's where you'll get your individual schedule, which has your individual advising appointment time for Thursday morning. It has your ID card. It has uh, your swag bag, your welcome bag. Um, and like combination for your post office box, all, all the things that you need to really get started. So to the extent you can, we really would like you to try to do your check-in before move-in. We know for some students that's gonna be hard for any number of reasons, but um, that's kind of how it's designed. And if you have to do it a little bit different, that's okay. Uh, but it does close at two. And so really important um, to try to get that done uh, as quickly as you arrive to campus. All right, next question. 
Do students with a meal plan get lunch at the dining hall on Wednesday? Yep, they sure do. We didn't put the meals for Wednesday on the schedule just because we weren't sure what people were going to do. But the dining halls do open for the board plan on Wednesday. Uh, I think they might even be serving breakfast. Um, I know all the cafes, coffee, coffee spots on campus are opening up at 8 a.m. Uh, on Wednesday. So, yep, we are up and running. Um, for lunch, we just didn't put it on just because of move in and, and how people are uh, coming in. So yes, you can use your meal plan for uh, lunch on Wednesday. For Thursday lunch and dinner, um, can parents eat in the dining hall? You sure can. Our dining hall uh, seats 800 people. I don't think I've ever seen 800 people in it, but it has the capacity for 800 people. Um, one thing that's really important to know for anybody who's not on the meal plan, so families, friends, uh, you know, transfer students that are living off campus, is that they, they don't take cash. So you have to you have to pay by either your college uh, ID card, your your charge card, college charge card ID or by credit card. So there's no, it's a no cash operation. And that's the case in all the cafes, both the one in um, the, the large one, Cleveland Commons, but also the one in the Reed Campus Center. Um, I would also say there's great places to eat in town. So uh, you are welcome to eat on campus, eat in town. Um, either, one, either one will work for uh, Thursday. Um, and I would say for students on Thursday, um, you know, if, if they want to go off town, off campus with you for lunch uh, or breakfast, they are welcome to do so. There's not any scheduled programming during that time. Um, the the dinner on Thursday night is a is really the first scheduled program. They have that in their section. So that would be the, the meal I would say for families probably shouldn't be uh, in the hall or in the in the commons during that that meal just because uh, that is really a time when the sections are starting to, to gel. But we've got great eateries in campus, so please also explore our town. Is there any support help for new students looking for campus jobs, work study, or other? Yes. On Friday morning, uh, there is a session called How to Find a Campus Job, and that it's a it's about an hour and a half block. Uh, the first half hour is peer led. It's led by some of our returning students that intern in the Career and Community Engagement Center where work study is housed. And then the second uh, the second part of that or the bulk of that is actually a, an employee a campus job fair in which campus employers who are looking to hire students will be tabling and uh, encouraging students to apply for jobs in their areas. So um, yes, is the answer. Uh, I will say one thing that's really important for students who are working on campus is they need to bring the appropriate work documentation with them. And that is um, either a passport. So you can bring your passport. That's the only piece of documentation you need. Or if you don't have a passport, you can bring um, a state issued photo identification, so a driver's license or an identification card, and, and this is the catch, and your original birth certificate or original social security card. They cannot take copies. So um, really important if, if students are planning on working on campus, whether they have work study or, or otherwise, they either need to have a passport, that's a single item passport or government issued ID and uh, a birth certificate or security social security card and they must be the originals so no copies allowed um, hopefully that answers that one. Could you speak more about each person's move in time what to expect help whatever yep Okay, so i'm going to just click on move in group one so y'all can see oops no nope, that's not a good place to show you. Uh, Maybe I can show you here. Nope, can't show you here. Uh, I'm gonna show you in a different place. So hang on, let me switch gears to my other place to show you. So um, here is uh, the new student orientation calendar. And if you go to the move-in groups, you can see uh, that we have assigned out specific groups for specific times. The reason we do that is just to uh, eliminate the congestion in the elevators and on the stairwells 
It's designed really to load the building in from the top down. But when it's hotter, we want you to try, or cooler, we want you to try to be getting those top floors loaded and then down to the lower floors. Um, if you aren't getting into town until 11 and you're in the 10 o'clock move-in group, that's fine. You'll move in when you get to town. But what we are really want, not wanting is the 11 o'clock group to try to move in early. So really important if you're in this 11 o'clock group, uh, Anderson sections A, D, and E, Jewett first and second floors, Lyman first and second floors, or Prentice first and second floors. We're going to ask you to hold off until 11 to uh, move in and allow those 10 o'clock uh, students to get all settled. Um, our experience is it takes about 60 to 90 minutes for students to get all their belongings from the curb into the room and unpacked. You might not have all your posters set up, but you'll at least have all your stuff in your room and, and then you can spend time kind of uh, really starting to unpack uh, while you're there. Um, so that's kind of specific to uh, the, the timing and who's going when. Um, we have a huge uh, team of volunteers, something like 120 or 130 something volunteers help with uh, opening day for everything from check-in to um, move in to traffic direction to you name it, we've got people helping. They will be very easily identified because they will be wearing a t-shirt that is kind of this color, right? Bright yellow. Um, and it says Whitman College so that you can very easily identify the helpers. Um, that can point you in the right direction. We have folks that are directing traffic. We have folks that are unloading cars. We have folks that are carrying boxes into the building. Uh, we have folks that are driving a shopping shuttle, an airport shuttle, you name it. We've got a team of folks that are standing ready uh, for the arrival of your students. Um, and so, yes, there will be help, uh, plenty of help. Um, do you need to be done by a specific time? Nope. Your student's gonna be living here till December. So um, they, the students themselves do have a scheduled activity that starts at 2.30 so that they will need to be at that. That is a required session. It's their first OWL meeting. So it's with their small opening week leader group. Um, and that uh, proceeds just is right in front of the new student and family uh, welcome. So. But they have plenty of time kind of throughout the week to kind of continue to get themselves settled. Uh, as you see, we get out to the weekend on Saturday and Sunday. Everything gets pushed back. Uh, the first scheduled thing they have is not until noon or later. So they've, they've got time to get things unpacked and settled. I know it looks a little frenzied um, as we get them going, but uh, th they will have time to get stuff uh, unpacked and settled in. Um, check in the question about the timing of the check in at the Reed Campus Center. So this is a very large class. There are 480 something of you, maybe 85 as of today. Um, and so uh, there's a number of stations that students need to go through. Here's what I would tell you. Getting in line early is not going to get you any earlier through the door. I will not open the doors until eight because we need all of our volunteers to get there and get in the right spots. And as soon as we have a team in place and we're ready to roll and everybody knows what they're doing, then we'll open the doors. But uh, my experience is that will not be until right at eight o'clock. Um, it's in the full sun. So, you, you know, um, I, I Hopefully it'll be a little cooler at eight o'clock in the morning on the 23rd. It's certainly going to be cooler than it is today in Walla Walla. Um, but I mean, I, we're going to get you all through. So at some point, if you have that later move in time, I wouldn't get in line at eight o'clock. I'd get in line at 10 o'clock. Um, if you have a 10 o'clock move in, yep, yeah, maybe eight o'clock is fine. Uh, there'll be a bunch of, you know, about half the class is moving in at each of these blocks of time. So if we can stagger you a little bit, that will help everybody uh, with the process. Can I pick up pack packages that read on the 21st before I get my ID card? Yes, you can. You're going to need to have some kind of identification and you're going to need to have some kind of plan about what you're going to do with them because uh, you won't be able to put them into the residence halls until the 23rd. But as long as our post office is open and its typical hours are 10 a.m. to 4 p.m., um, and that is would be true for Monday and Tuesday, you can pick up any packages that you've had sent. 
Uh, on the 23rd, they will have extended hours. They will be opening at eight. Um, and I believe also maybe on, uh, they might stay open a little bit later. Uh, no, no, no. Uh, they're eight to four on Wednesday. And then I think actually on Thursday, they do return back to their 10 to four. Um, they are not open on the weekend. So that is kind of an important thing to note. Um, if you don't pick up your packages on the 23rd, you would need to try to find time to do it uh, on uh, probably Thursday morning because you're kind of blocked in um, or during lunch, uh, you're blocked in on the, the rest of the time when they're open. When will kids know about their writing assessment? Um, yeah, so uh, the bulk of students, 440 something of them have already taken the writing assessment and those are in the process of being processed and the uh, determinations are being made. And those students who I believe are in those classes either they have notified those students already or in the process. Um, I do not think they are notifying students who will not be in rhetoric writing and public discourse. I think the plan is if you do not have that on your schedule on the 23rd, you are not in it and therefore will need to be thinking about another class for the 24 on the for the on the 24th. Okay. Um, so there's a question about do you actually see the results of your assessment? Nobody sees the results of your assessment. We just have too many, uh, there's too many moving pieces on the writing assessment for students to find out kind of what their particular score is. What I can tell you is that they are graded blindly, meaning they don't know who you are um, twice. And so two people are independently grading um, these, uh, independently grade, grading each assessment. And for some students, if you if there's a if the if the gradings are out of whack, so if somebody grades it a, and I don't even know what the, the score is, if someone's grades it a 10 and someone grades it a 20, a third person will grade it to try to try to figure out kind of are they a 10 or are they a 20 in the in the grading uh, system. Um, and again, I don't know what I, I just made those numbers up. So don't don't think if you're one of those or the other of those, it means anything because uh, uh, that is not the case. Um, if you are a transfer student who transferred in language and writing equivalent or, or first year comp equivalent from another institution, you will likely see on your progress page, um, it'll show that it's been completed. And actually, why don't I show you how to do that? Because that might be a way to answer some of these questions. So hang on one quick second here. I got to get myself to a different spot. Okay, so hopefully everybody's familiar with my Whitman, my.whitman.edu. Um, students will want to go over here to the student tools. Just a couple of reminders, lots of things you can do here, especially for your parents if you're a student. This account authorization, if you want your parents to be able to see your statement, your billing statement, this is what you'll want to do. If you need more flex dollars, here's where you do it. If you have any check-ins or holds, this is where you do it. So here's a good example. It's me, I'm looking at mine. I'm not a student, so I don't have any holds. So you can see, you. this is where you'll play around with that. Um, you'll wanna look at any uncleared holds. And they kind of show up a little weird. I think they might show up with big green buttons, which make it, makes it seem like it's done. If there's a button to click in the uncleared holds, click it and then do whatever is asking you to do there. Most of them are very short. You're putting in a, you're clicking a box or you're typing in your name. They are, they are quick in that regard. Uh, in terms of my progress, this is always comical because you can see I've, I've made none. Um, but let me throw something in here quick. Okay, so once you get to your My Progress page, you should see a couple things starting to look yellow or green. Yellow means you're registered for it. Green means you're done. So you can see right here, my writing proficiency is still red. If you go into your My Progress and this is green, 
whether it's because you transferred in a class or you're through your writing assessment, you are done. Okay, so if the, if the writing profession proficiency one is green, um, or it's it kind of looks like this, and it's all this is all green, you are finished with uh, the writing assessment component. Okay, let me get back to a place that's going to make some more sense for other question answerings. Okay, um, there's a question about. I'm going to open up another blank here so I can toggle back and forth. So there's a question about uh, whether or not uh, someone can see the new student orientation stuff. So let me just show you where everything is again. I use this magnifying glass up in the main Whitman webpage. New student orientation right there. You're going to click here. Scroll down a little bit in this yellow box. There's all sorts of things that are important. And virtual orientation is the no before you go. And if you scroll down to the bottom, here are all the previous ones that we've done. We do have a, a few that are still sitting out there waiting for their um, captioning to come back. So they should be back here, I would imagine, any moment, really, because uh, we are wanting those to uh, obviously get um, uploaded. So um, thanks for flagging that for me. I will make sure that we make sure that communications gets the rest of those uploaded as soon as possible. Can, per can parents purchase meals? Yep, you sure can. You have to purchase them on a credit card. Uh, and there are a number of places that will be open. Our main dining hall, Cleveland Commons, uh, will be open uh, for all meals. And um, the Reed Campus Center will have extended hours on Wednesday and Thursday. Usually it's our, our afternoon, late night uh, dinery, but uh, for Wednesday and Thursday, they will be opening at 8 a.m. And they have a coffee bar there. Uh, they have lots and lots of grab and go. And they also have hot meal at lunch and dinner. You might find that it's a little less crowded than Cleveland um, because in addition to all of our new students, Certainly all of our helpers are back as well. So our 50 opening, 52 opening week leaders, all of our RAs, returning fall student athletes, uh, returning international students that are helping with in, international student orientation. So you might find that Reed is a little bit less busy um, than uh, uh, Cleveland. If we have room for more credits and we do not end up being enrolled in rhetoric writing public discourse, will we be able to add more classes on the 24th? Yes, you will. In fact, we really will want you to add more classes because you need to have a schedule that's right around uh, 16 credits. Um, and so for most students, that ends up being uh, four, four credit classes. For some students, they might have two, three credit classes and three, four credit classes. The upper amount of credits that you can take of academic credits, and I'll put a little asterisk by that, academic credits is 18. 18 is the maximum load you can take. Um, I say academic credits because you can take activity credits, weight training, a music lesson, um, a theater production. Those are all activity courses and they don't count against your uh, maximum load. Uh, so you can you can take more, but uh, only 18 of the academic um, in your first semester uh, as a new student at Whitman. Do you have any recommendations for parents who are staying in town? Ooh, I'm going to need some, like, what kind of recommendations? I'm going to need some more recommendations about, or uh, give me a little bit more detail about the kinds of recommendations you want. Um, I've lived here 31 years. I married someone who grew up here in the Walla Walla Valley, so I can do recommendations. Let me know what you're thinking about in terms of recommendations. Does an expired passport work? I don't think so. I think it has to be, and I think the same is true about your like driver's license. I think it has to be a valid passport or a valid uh, government issued ID. So it has to be in its active state. A passport, yeah, I'm pretty sure a passport card also works um, the same as the booklet. So great question about uh, the documents needed for work study. Hello, where and how can I access those events and the calendar? Okay, so let's see. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna answer this, but then I'm also gonna type the answer in this question because 
we have two ways that you can do it. This one that's going in now that hopefully everybody can see, uh, I just submitted it. So you, you're gonna have to look at the answered questions. I put a link there. That's gonna take you to, um, let's see. Let me get to the calendar. That's gonna take you to this calendar. Um, we also, as I think you saw, are running it off of a Google calendar as well. So it all feeds to the same spot. This is a publicly available calendar. And so if you're a, a person who likes to have things on your Google calendar or on your phone, this is this is that option for you um, to subscribe to it or pick it up there. So two calendar options for you. Okay, so let's see, question about um, back to the work, work study documentation. So the passport is the sole document we need uh we do have one for the work uh let's see so again if you are wanting to work on campus you're you're going to need some documentation in order for them it's it's what we refer to as work authorization documentation um and there's a choice of documents you can bring you can either bring your passport that would be all you needed or if you don't have a passport or your passport is expired you would need to bring a government issued photo ID and your original birth certificate or original social security uh, card. So you need two on that side. So passport, one item or government issued ID and one other piece. Where can we find the schedule for orientation? Uh, I've answered that in the answered questions. There's two links for it. If you are an incoming student, um, we're going to ask you to load it onto your phone. If you don't have a phone that works in that way, we're, we have a, a not as pretty or easy thing. Let's see, how do I, there, little, little calendar for you that you'll have at your disposal. Um, we're really encouraging students to try, we're trying to lessen our paper footprint. So we're really trying to have students use uh, the resources that are online. Um, I also have just today invited um, the STU27 at Whitman.edu listserv, which is the incoming class listserv, to uh, the majority of the events where they are considered all class events. Um, so you can just accept those as well as a way of demonstrating, uh, making sure that it shows up on your calendar as well. Um, and that way you get the reminders as well. So um, we'll keep track of you. We'll make sure you know where you're supposed to go, when you're supposed to go, um, and there'll be schedules all over campus to help you uh, do that. But uh, definitely getting something loaded on your phone, either, um, either this one, which is calendar.whitman.edu, backslash orientation or the Google one. And again, the links for those are in the um, in the, the answers. One thing that you can do on, for your calendars, you can add things to your plan. Um, and I believe those show up automatically in your, your schedule. So um, my calendar thingy is weird just because I have different privileges. So I can see all of them, but uh, we definitely will make sure that you know where you're going. Great question. Next question. How important is that I order textbooks for classes now? Um, yeah, the book, the bookstore is going to send you a gazillion and a half uh, reminders all the time for all sorts of things. Um, the advantage to ordering them now is that it's grab and go when you get here. So uh, they go around, pick up all your books for you. They get them in a big stack. They probably even put them in a bag and then you show up and you pick them up um, and you're on your way. Uh, if you don't want to do that, you certainly can come to the bookstore, but keep in mind there are 485 of you who are trying to get your books all in this period of time. So there might be an advantage to um, ordering them and paying for them in advance and then being able to just pick them up. Uh, if you are relying on, um, if you have a scholarship or uh, financial aid that covers your books, you might want to wait till you get to campus because you can use your card 
your ID card to charge against your student account uh, and, and charge your books to your student account, which allows you then to use those monies. So a couple different ways for you to do it. How do we know which first year uh, seminar group topic we're in? Oh, okay, this is a, hmm, let me think about the best way to show you this. Okay, if you go to, um, this is gonna be a two-parter, okay? So if you go here to your uh, student check-in tools, you should be able to see your schedule someplace. Oh. All right, let me, let's go one little. You should be able to see your schedule. This is obviously an old schedule for a student from long ago. You might recognize the last name, um, but you should be able to see your schedule and it will have um, a name and so it will say like Gen S 175 and then it'll have a letter. Um, and then it'll also tell you who the faculty member is for your uh, learning community. That's part one. Part two is then you would need to go to exploring complex questions here. And you would need to look at each of these to figure out down at the bottom who is who are the faculty for each of the sections that you're that are the learning community. So these are the faculty down here. These are the faculty for climate, optimism, action, and creating futures. Similar at the bottom here are the ones for games. So that'll help you kind of get sorted out. Um, but you can also. If you're buying books and you're trying to figure out which books do I buy for first year seminar, um, I was down there today uh, and the books are sorted by sections. So if you're in Sharon Alker's section, her books are all the books that you need for her section. Don't worry about the learning community have already been organized for you. Does a driver's license count as a government issued ID? Yep, sure does. Is there a way to get a link to the calendar? Yeah. Okay, yep, I uh, I think I put it in the answered questions. So my guess is a couple of these are, um, uh, are have happened since I started answering them. So um, the if you look in the answered questions, you'll see that I've put in two links, one that takes you to this page and one that gives you access to this calendar. Um, I'm also now going to add the calendar for the parents because I do recognize there are some parents on this call. So I'm going to add a third calendar. This one will say parents orientation. Oops, actually, hang on, back up. Family and friends orientation calendar. All right, hopefully that gives you all the calendars that you ever could dream or want to have. Okay, let's see. Um, so I think, yeah, so you, I've put in every link to every calendar I've shown you. So you should be able to, to grab the ones you want. Uh, will there be a shuttle for pickup on two, on the, on the Tuesday flight, there is not. There is only a shuttle on the Wednesday. Um, for Tuesday flight, the flights at, in Walla Walla come in midday. So they're coming about one o'clock. Um, I would suggest we do have taxi service in town. We do have Uber in town and we do have a new service in town. Um, I have not, I have not um, used it myself, but it's something called Walla Round, like, Walla and then round like a circle um, that is kind of a local Uber-ish kind of activity. So taxi, Uber, or uh, the Walla round. I will also tell you, our town is very aware that new students are arriving. And so the Uber drivers in town and the taxi drivers in town, I think kind of wake up for this little bit of, of the week. So um, I, uh, I, I think you'll be able to find someone that can get you a ride down to campus um, pretty easily. And I will for that one, I'm gonna also put in the Walla round. I saw the Walla round thing on um, 
on Facebook. So that what might be the best, easiest way to uh, find out uh, about it. Um, question about the heat in Walla Walla. That's a good question to be about today because let me just look and tell you what we're sitting at right now today. Been a little toasty. Good news is we're getting it out of our system. So today uh, we're, we're topping out at 103. Um, thankfully it cools down tomorrow and we are looking at about uh, low 80s for next week, uh, which is perfect for, uh, for all things move in, new students orientation and whatnot. Um, there is a mix of orientation events inside, outside. Um, they are, when, when the orientation activities are inside, they are typically in large buildings that are air conditioned, such as the Reed Campus Center or Cordner Hall or some of our academic buildings. Um, we, there are a few things that are in the halls uh, and they have the ability to flex. If, it, if it's cooler to be elsewhere, they will move around as need be. Um, there are some things that are outside. Uh, you will note that some of the things like the opening week, the first meeting, first gathering with opening week leader is held outside, um, but those are all in shaded areas. So we are, we are very conscious of the heat. Um, we are, I would encourage students to A, if they can bring a fan and B, make sure they have a water bottle that they are, have filled and they are, you know, uh, carrying around with them. That will be something that will help, help everybody. So, I, I, I am unaware of the alumni student reception that is happening at the same time as the OWL meeting. So, hmm, I don't know who's crashing in on my opening week schedule. Um, your student really needs to be at their opening week uh, uh, bit. It is their first time that they're gonna connect with their community that they're gonna be uh, with during um, opening week. So I would hate for them to miss out on that. I don't know who you are, but if you could email me, this would be really important for me to know what this is and where, where it's happening and when it's happening. Um, so if you could email me at dunjl at whitman.edu, don't worry, you're not getting anybody in trouble, but I do need to have a clear understanding of how this might be impacting other parts of our, our week. Uh, so if you, could, if you could send that along, that would be really helpful. Ah, question about posters in the hall. Um, they are real particular about what you hang posters with. I think the gold standard right now is command strips. Um, I don't think they like that gooky, greasy, goopy stuff. And they're absolutely no, no to push pins or tacks. So I'm pretty sure it is command strips is the way to go. It looks like students have required activities Wednesday afternoon and Thursday during the day until the family farewell. Is that true? Yep, that's true. Um, we're going to keep your students pretty busy, uh, and uh, it is all it, it is all designed to make sure that they are in the best position possible to enter our community, knowing that they belong here, knowing that they matter here, knowing that they uh, have classes to attend, they've met their advisor. They have an understanding of our community values and standards. They have um, you know, met key faculty and staff in key areas all over campus. So yep, we're gonna keep them pretty busy right up until the family farewell. Um, and so there's not a lot of time in there uh, for, for uh, family time, I recognize that. Um, if you're looking for a meal, the meal would probably be the Wednesday dinner is one that's it's it's a little bit more loose um, or or the Thursday lunch is also a good one. But there's not a lot of run around town time um, in part because we got to get them ready for uh, the start of our academic year. What if you can't submit a check in? I think this must have to do with holds. If you could add, ask this question with a little more detail so that I know specifically what you're struggling with so I can try to answer that, that would be great. I, okay, so let's see, I have 15 
credits currently without the writing class. I remember seeing there's a 14 credit class. So if you have 15 credits, it probably means that you must have an activity course in there. Um, and if if they need to add a writing class on top of that, they will find a space for it. Do not worry at this point. Um, they will be in contact with you if something needs to go off of that list. Don't take anything off your list now until you're told to do so. Okay, can students buy meals for family or friends with their meal plan? Yep, you sure can. Here's what I'm gonna uh, kind of warn you about. You've been given an allotted number of meals to last you till December. Um, and they're designed for you to have your meals kind of parsed out. Um, couple couple words of advice. If you buy for other folks, just remember at some point, you're not gonna have enough for you. The other thing is if you are a fancy coffee drinker, you drink fancy coffees and you like fancy coffees, you probably need to be on the highest meal plan that there is because you will burn through your meal plan for breakfast, lunch, and dinner by buying fancy coffee. So either you gotta squash that fancy coffee buying habit or buy the bigger meal plan so that you can um, accommodate your fancy coffee drinking uh, habits. Um, you can also use debit cards. Debit cards absolutely do work uh, as well. Is there any chance more one credit activity courses will open up? A lot of them are filled up. You are correct. Um, they, there might be some seats that pop open in those. Um, so after round one, which ends uh, tomorrow, so if you haven't got classes on your schedule, please get those done. Round two, you don't have to do anything. Someone, someone will add rhetoric, writing, and public discourse 170 to your schedule if you need it. Um, that will be added. Uh, round three is you adding another class um, after talking with your advisor on the 24th. And then the whole system reopens again on, on the first day of class, on the 29th. And then all the returning students are back in and they are making changes to their schedules. So there's gonna be courses that are currently closed that reopen um, as the returning students come in and adjust their schedules uh, to be uh, fit. So um, that is, is a way that, um, you'll be able to make some wiggle room around there. I will also, I will tell you, um, please look in the sports studies, recreation, athletics. Um, the One of the teams that I supervise is the outdoor program, and they have gazillions and gazillions of recreation for credit classes. Um, you know, something like 20 sections of rock climbing or something like that. It's a, it's a very large number of, of courses. So also be willing to try out things you might not otherwise you know, if, if you had your heart set on yoga, I think there's maybe one section of yoga. Um, there's other ways to stay very active on our campus. Um, and I would really encourage you to look at those other ones as well. All right, someone confirmed I was correct. They all have to be active. Active uh, or, or not expired government issued IDs or passports. Is there a certain date that scholarship money must be sent to the college? No, I mean, if you have outside scholarships that are being accounted for, um, at some point you're gonna want those in your, in your, in your, in your uh, statement so that you can draw on that money. Um, I don't think there's a specific date, but you know, at some point you're gonna, you're gonna wanna start using that money. So having that loaded up, there is a required There is a required meeting on Monday, uh, August 28th, Monday morning, 9 a.m. for all students that have financial aid have to attend this, this uh, meeting. Um, and that would be another, if, if, you, if you haven't quite figured it out by then, that would be another great time to ask that question to make sure that you've got it all answered. This is our financial aid team. For if that question was asked by parents, uh, the, the, the first session, um, for family orientation is financial aid internships and student employment, and that they can answer that question there as well. 
Okay, let's see. Um, I will be recording this. Uh, the turnaround on this is gonna be tight. Um, I might see if they're willing to get it up and um, uncaptioned um, just so that it's available because by the time it gets captioned, you will all have been here. So we'll try to get this one kind of uh, expedited in, the, in getting back up. All right, uh, I'm gonna skip over ones that I've answered and I'll come back and get those at the end as we get closer to five. Um, okay, do you have favorite things to do around town? It's my first time in town. Don't want them to be bored. Um, we have an amazing downtown. Um, we are our, our downtown, our, which is literally called Main Street, um, has won the Main Street Award for the United States a couple times over. Um, it is a fun little place. It's got good stuff uh, all through downtown. Um, live music, uh, cute little shops, nice new plaza, um, little eateries up and down, um, you know, several blocks. Uh, and then kind of on the side streets adjacent to Main Street. Uh, we have the number one candy store in the nation. Bright's Candy Shop voted number one candy store in the nation this summer. So you certainly wouldn't want to miss out on that. Um, further afield from, from campus, there are some really awesome uh, organic farms and uh, that welcome visitors. So great, you know, just out and about town. Um, Obviously, I think most people are aware that uh, Walla Walla is also a, a big uh, winery uh, vineyard area. So sometimes those are fun to explore. Um, families that are in town on Friday uh, that want to explore kind of the winery scene, Tranch Winery hosts a free come out, sit in our field, listen to live music. Uh, activity that's really, really fun for families and all ages actually can, can attend there. So um, yeah, like good stuff, good stuff to have uh, both on campus and in town. Um, Fort Walla Walla, it's amazing resource in town as well. Um, lots to do out at Fort Walla Walla. There's uh, hiking trails, there are, uh, there's a nature preserve, Obviously the Fort Walla Walla Museum is there. Maybe that wasn't obvious, but Fort Walla Walla Museum is there. And then there's a, uh, a professional length uh, disc golf course that's out there as well. So I think that's, that's a bunch of my favorite stuff. Um, let's see. So there, I just got a whole bunch of emails that are referring to me as Stu27. Um, yep. You did. Those were all the calendar invites. So if you want this thing on your calendar um, directly, if you want this to show up on your phone, just start accepting all of those. Uh, and you'll find that your phone starts populating with all of the orientation activities. Someone's asking, There, we will have printed orientation schedules. Again, they are very... Um, they are skeleton in nature. They are literally a spreadsheet uh, with dates, times, and the thing and where it is. So um, it will be available. For, it will be available both for families and for students at check-in. So there's a question about whether students need a small lockbox in their room um, about having important documents or whatnot in their room. Um, I'm not entirely sure that their desks lock. Um, their desks might lock. I'm not entirely sure about that. Um, but what I will tell you is the outside door locks. So they should absolutely, they should not treat their residence hall room like their family, their home, their bedroom at home. My guess is most of your students do not lock, or most students and most of your students do not lock their bedrooms at home. Um, in fact, they probably keep the door wide open or maybe they keep the door wide open. Uh, but here, you need to kind of think about your hallway door as the external door to your house. And you need to be thinking about yourself living in a town where you would lock the external door to your house. Uh, and that is something that between roommates, there needs to be a conversation about we're going to lock the door. We're not just going to leave the door unlocked um, as a way to make sure that uh, things are safe. But if you, you know, I guess if you have a little one of those little small safe lock boxes, probably not a bad idea. 
Um, and I'm, again, I'm not quite sure about whether the desks have a little locking feature to them or not. So a question about uh, what's optional and what's required in orientation week. Um, so almost all of orientation week is required. The things that are not required, just as I look at this, this page of the schedule, um, let me just kind of run through kind of the not required. You're not required to go on the shopping shuttle or the campus tour. Um, you're not really required to go to any meals. Please eat. Please eat when you're hungry and um, don't when you're not. Uh, but all of the rest of this stuff, fearless, beer goggles, section meeting, consent and healthy relationships, DEIA, gender and sexuality, those are all required. How to find a campus job? Not required. If you want a campus job, you should probably go to that. The identity and belonging resources activity, it is not required, um, but uh, it is a great place for you to find belonging and find folks um, that are that you're, you're going to spend the ne next four years with. Um, and then these big three social events on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday night, also not required. Great opportunities to meet people, have fun, but it's certainly not required. So if you want to you need if this is all too much and that's a lot and you just need to take a break you can certainly uh you know go to bed early or not go to the dance or not go to night at read those are those are optional activities as well um so you'll i think you'll have a sense when you get here of, of what are the ones you need to be at and what are the ones you can can check out of um Question about work study. Do all work study jobs give the same number of hours? Nope, uh, they do not. Uh, so I can talk about the work study jobs I have in, in the building, which I don't have any openings, I'm sorry. I don't actually hire new students until the spring because the positions that we hire are for the building and, and they run the info desk. So we need them kind of to have a little bit of, of legs underneath them first. Um, so kids that work on the info desk for me, we guarantee a four hour four hours a week. Um, I also have a team of building managers. Those students typically get seven hours a week. Um, I will tell you where you can get the most hours, the most consistent hours, um, is with our dining services. They they are the largest employer. Um, I think they are the folk, the place where students actually can get in early as first years and have a job for all four years. The perks working for Bone App are amazing. They get a free meal every shift that they work, which means that meal money goes longer, which means you can afford the fancy coffees. Um, they also have kind of a management training program built in. So really great for students to demonstrate kind of longevity in a workplace. Um, and they can often give the most hours and the most consistent hours working with students. So I would really encourage students to consider working uh, for BONAP um, for sure. Um, do your parents need to be with you at check-in? Nope. In fact, we're not even going to let your parents come in the student check-in door. There will be a door for parents, but they don't get to they don't get to walk alongside you through this process. We're gonna we're gonna hang on to you and, and work you through the check-in stations. Um, and you do not need your parents to do that. There will be a space for parents to kind of get their bearings and, and um, let us know that they are here and pick up some materials for parents. Um, and then uh, you'll kind of work your way through the check-in stations and you'll pop out the other end and, and then can find your parents at that time. Um, okay, uh, let's see, question about shopping shuttle. We're gonna run a shopping shuttle. It's gonna run uh, from actually 12.15 to just right up against two o'clock. Um, and it it has limited uh, seating. Um, so the shopping shuttle, I think it's not gonna carry very many people, but it'll take students down to Walmart, which is uh, five, seven miles from campus uh, for, whatever you know, like whatever you might still need if you don't have a car in town and you need help getting to one of the shopping areas we will be driving a shopping shuttle to that area are rice cookers allowed in the dorms yep i believe they are can people google um oh yeah thank you for the your help 
people can Google federal I-9 form. Thank you. So I was reading this as a question. It's actually a statement. People can Google federal I-9 form to find out what the legal documents they uh, need for their student to work on campus. Thank you, helpful parent, uh, for this uh, like hot tip for us. Is it unusual at this time for their registered classes to not have book assignments? Um, so the math books, I think, I don't think they have to buy the math books. I think they actually, I think our math books are open source, at least calculus one, two, and three, which my kids both took at Whitman um, are all open source books and they make those available to the students. Um, first year sections, yep, they should have books. I'm not sure why those aren't loaded yet on the, in the, the scheduling system. But you also could look at the bookstore. If these two things are out of whack, it may be that the bookstore has them or you could call the bookstore. Uh, but every first year section will definitely have books assigned to it. Um, the other thing is you can buy some of your books now and you can get some of the books when you get to, you know, get to campus. So does the uh, question about the meal plan, how does the meal plan work? The meal plan works, uh, it's an a la carte. So it's a point of, a point of service uh, system. So um, if you go to the noodle bar and you get the noodle bowl, um, you pay for the noodle bowl there. And then if you go get a fancy coffee, you pay for the fancy coffee there. And that all comes off of your meal plan. Um, and so, yeah, it is at, at each of the stations is where you're paying. Um, I should note that uh, soda um, and I believe like milk and those kinds of things are free. They're included in your meal. So when I go and I get the noodle bar, I also sometimes get like the iced tea uh, and that's included in my meal. There's not a pay to play station at the iced tea place. Um, I have an ESA that I will be bringing you with me and I understand there's a reason. Uh, okay, so you have a... a Yes, got it. Let me see if I have to read this all the three. Um, there will be times during, okay, so you had an emotional support animal. It's going to be staying in the residence hall. Um, and because this is a new place and a new bit, you're going to have time um, uh, to go back to your room uh, periodically throughout the day. Um, you know, some of these things are going to get done a little bit early. Some of them are going to, you know, there's some flexibility in there. Uh, but uh, you know, particularly like Thursday morning, you're not blocked out through all this time. This is all individually scheduled times for you. So you're going to only go to one of the academic workshops. You're only going to go to one of the wellness workshops and you're going to have your advising appointment in this three hour block. So you're going to have some flexibility there. Um, you don't go to every, you know, you go to the workshops based on where you live. So there's some some flexibility built into the schedule for you to, to be able to uh, take care of your animal. Thank you for that. Let's see, when I tried to add a one credit course to my plan, it says I go into overload. Um, so I am not sure why it's not letting you. Um, probably the best thing to do would be to email me separate, dunjl at whitman.edu, and let me see if I can troubleshoot this for you by looking at your schedule to see if I can figure out what the what the issue is. Um, uh, are scholarships considered financial aid? Um, scholarships that the college gave you are considered financial aid. So if you got a, um, a need-based scholarship that would be considered financial aid. If you have a merit-based scholarship, that would, it is a type of financial aid, but I don't believe you are required to go to the financial aid meeting. It's if you have loans, um, need-based aid, uh, grants of any sort, outside scholarships of any sort. Um, one, it's not a dumb question. Thank you for asking it. But two, yes, you'll probably wanna go to the required financial aid meeting. So in the answered questions, uh, the question about how do I add family orientation events on my calendar, if you go to the answered questions, you'll see one of the questions I answered has three links in it. And one of the links is the family and friends orientation schedule. And so you should be able to um, click on that and then uh, add, add those as you need to your, to your own schedule. 
And the question about does Bon Appetit qualify as an on-campus job? It does, and they are always looking for work-study students. Um, the question about your move-in time. So your move-in time, again, is based on where you live, where you're moving in. So if you look at the schedule that I have on the screen right now, there are two move-in groups. It's based on your residential, uh, whoa, what did I do? Sorry. It's based on where you're living. So depending on where you're living, you're either in move-in group one that starts at 10 or move in group two that starts at 11. Um, and I assume that's what you're asking about when you're asking about uh, move in times. Does the library offer employment? Yep, they sure do. Um, I will say uh, those, are, those are jobs that students get as first years and have for all four years. Um, and so I don't know how many seniors they graduated out, but uh, they are they're folks that often hang on to their employees in part because they are great jobs. Students like them very much because you can do homework while you're doing your work in the library. So um, there, that's a plus of a job for sure. Uh, but yes, they absolutely have student employees that work there. How long does check-in take? Um, so there are, I think there are 12 stations. It goes pretty quick. Um, you know, the first station, you're gonna get your ID card. And then you're going to pretty much show your ID card at every other station to get everything else you need. So uh, at most places, they are just giving you something. So um, in some cases, it's a bag. They don't need to know who you are. They're just giving you a bag. Uh, in other places, they absolutely need to know who you are because they're giving you an individual um, individual schedule that's for you for that Thursday morning where you're meeting with your advisor and whatnot. Um, you're going to get a really sweet T-shirt your class t-shirt. So we're going to need to know what size you wear. So um, yeah, we're definitely going to, we're going to run you through it pretty quick. Uh, we, as I said, have lots and lots of helpers. So we're going to make sure that we, we get you all through as quickly as possible. But um, some of them will take a teeny bit longer because someone's got to look up your post office combo and hand it to you. Uh, other ones, they're just literally handing you a bag and you're walking along. The way to speed yourself through the check-in is to ensure that you have submitted your photo for your photo ID and that you have recorded your name for the college. These are two critical things. If you wanna be in the express lane, that's how you get in it. Um, but making sure that you've submitted your photo, I think we still had about 80 photos that hadn't been submitted uh, and a, a bunch more name recordings. Um, those are two stops. And so if you have those done, you're skipping ahead uh, past those. If you're having trouble getting your photo to load because it's too big, send me an email so I can uh, help you get a, a alternative loading of that photo in another way um, to uh, get sorted out. Um, question about whether a student has to do check-in at Reed before going to the dorm. I would recommend that they do because you do get things that might be helpful for the actual move-in part at the dorm. Um, for students that have uh, purchased a refrigerator or rented a refrigerator from us, you can pay for your refrigerator, then you get your receipt for the refrigerator so that when you move in, you, you're all ready to go uh, with your refrigerator. So um, I would expect student, I would expect the check-in process to maybe take 30, 45 minutes total um, as we get you through. And again, photo turned in, submitted, and name recording done, and that will help speed you up through this process. You do not need to be at check-in at 8 a.m. If you have the 11 o'clock check-in time, you can definitely come 10, 10.30, something like that uh, would be great. Um, question about where do you look for campus jobs? So again, we're running a session on Friday morning called How to Find a Campus Job, but you can also be on a system called Handshake, uh, and I've, I've spent, sent some information in the Monday emails about Handshake. But setting up your Handshake account, making sure you've got everything in your Handshake account will also help you with the process um, because that's all campus jobs are handled through Handshake. That's where you apply for them. That's where you submit your materials. That's where uh, folks are looking for applicants for their jobs. Um, and uh, that's where we make sure that everything is good to go. Um, let's see. Uh, 
do do uh, all students go through orient do all students go through orientation, including check-in? Yes, is the answer. So even if you came for the summer fly-in, or if you are here early for uh, or, uh, international student orientation, um, you are going to come through check-in. That is a required place. That's where you're going to learn about things like, who's my pre-major advisor? When's my pre-major advising appointment time? Where is my pre-major advisor's office? How do I get there? Those kinds of things. So absolutely, everybody comes through uh, check-in and you're gonna go through almost all of this. You're gonna go through all the stations for sure. Um, so, someone's audio checked out. So I'll just remind you, the best way to ensure that you get to skip a couple of the stations in the check-in is to make sure that you have submitted your photo, one, and recorded your name, two, for the name recording. So those are two pieces. If you're wondering, when did I learn about these? In the very, 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 very first Monday email, which was not on a Monday, it was Tuesday. I think it was maybe May 31st. So, um, you know, please go back and look at that. The photo submission, you get a link for that. Um, the name recording, you click on the link for that. So two different ways to get that bit turned in. Um, when do we find out when our advising appointment is? Uh, so again, at check-in, you're gonna get an individual schedule for your Thursday morning, which has you, you doing three things on Thursday morning, your individual advising appointment, the academic resources workshop, and the wellness at Whitman workshop all happen in the same block of time. You'll go to the workshops uh, depending on where, when your your assigned register or assigned advising time is. Uh, we'll get that that will happen in that that window. Um, so you'll get your individual schedule when you come through check in. Um, I think the last question, and I recognize we're running over time. Hank, thanks to all of you that have hung on here as as long as you have. How do I determine what books I need to purchase? So I think there are two ways. Um, I think one way is when you look at your schedule, if you click on, and this is really weird for me just because I don't have any classes. So let me try to, let me try to see if I can show you um, a way here. Hang on real quick. Oh, I'm not there. I thought it might be in your schedule. So it must be in your progress. I think if you click on the course itself, when you're in course search, there's an option to look at the textbooks at the bottom. If not, you can also do it on the bookstore's webpage, Barnes and Noble's bookstore webpage. Um, let me see where, if I can get you there. Hang on one second. Because I do know you can search on their website for uh, bits. So here's the, whoops, let me share my screen again with y'all. So here's the Barnes and Nobles uh, uh, page. I'm gonna put this in so everybody can see the link. Um, this will take you to the link. And then I think there is a place to figure out, ah, Course Materials Concierge. Ooh, so, so smart sounding. Search now. So you, that's where you'd be searching. You're going to need your course numbers to be able to do that. Um, question about my room number is A102. It actually, de it depends on the buildings. Not all our buildings are numbered in the same way. If this is an Anderson room number, then yep, you're on the first floor. I think you're also on the first floor because it's a 102 number. Um, in other places, if you had an A like 248, that's a section that runs this way as opposed to this way. Um, so I think the 100 tells you, yes, you're on the first floor. Also, if you're wondering, am I in move-in time 10 or move-in time 11? My understanding is that when they sent out the um, housing information, they also told you what time your move-in time is. So you might wanna look back at that. Okay, we have plowed through the questions, 69 total in the ones that I have answered. So, uh, wow, uh, 68 total in the ones that I've answered. So you guys win the record of most questions asked in a single section for sure. Um, 
I have to say, I am super, super excited. My team, we passed out today the very exciting opening week leader hats. People are getting hyped. We can't wait for you to get here. Um, I hope you know that uh, you belong here. You matter. It's important for us that your launch goes as smoothly and positively uh, and, and festively as possible, because we want you to be excited to be starting school here in just a few uh, weeks, and we are excited that you'll be joining our community. So thank you, everyone. Uh, appreciate you spending a little time and some extra time. Um, this is our last know before we go, and uh, I'm looking forward to seeing everybody when you arrive to campus on opening day. Have a great night.